At this point, industry has to help be a stronger convener and a stronger catalyst in the local community watershed efforts um, to sort of bring that drive, that glue, that management experience um, to get the multi-stakeholders focused, you know, watershed by watershed, sub-ecosystem by sub-ecosystem, and get that knitted together in a much more intensive way. You know, we always say that water is a precious resource, but I think overall we grossly undervalue it. Um, it, it's evident by the way we waste water, you know, and energy in, 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 in manufacturing or in creating the water, that, the potable waters that we use. We have really endeavored to focus on the communities where we work, where we live, and where we play. So that's sort of the philosophy. What are you doing where you work, where you live and play, and what is your reach into the, into the in environment, and what can you do over time to be able to change your own your own personal footprint in each of those locations. Um, and if you add to that the principle of back off, it's kind of easy to figure out what you need to do. Why do we have to treat water and then discharge it into the bay when that water is suitable to be used many places, many other opportunities within the community, such as uh, cooling towers, or such as uh, landscape irrigation, or street washing, or car washing or vehicle washing, bus washing, all these different types of uses that are some fairly high volumes of water. Why not reuse this water instead of bringing water back and treating it again? And, and even to take it into personal use is why do we have to flush our toilets with city drinking water qualities? What Coca-Cola has been doing, and we do across all our production facilities, is really to, um, to recycle the water to an extent where it can support aquatic life. Um, you know, all cook plants, one of the goals we have is to treat our wastewaters to, to an extent that it can support aquatic life. So we are putting back into the environment at least as clean as we took it from there. Uh, the other things that we are doing is that we also have what we call replenishment programs where, you know, we, we have committed to uh, return even the water that we use in our products. Uh, Singapore itself has a, a philosophy of, uh, I think, uh, what was it, recover every drop. That is, that's basically their philosophy, and they've done very, very well with it. I think there's, a, there's a, an opportunity here for, uh, for us as a community to, uh, to learn from someone who's a, 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 a country, a sovereign nation who's actually done just that. When we did the Brandon Shore Scrubber, uh, when you've got a bunch of folks in there with a, doing a billion dollars of work, it's relatively inexpensive to add in some additional projects, right? Because you already have the people there, you got the technology, you got the equipment. And so we ended up, we had a choice of pulling water directly from the bay or just hooking up to the Cox Creek POTW. And so we had to do it one way or the other, so we went ahead and just hooked up to the Cox Creek POTW. As it happens, we take that water now. We clean it up to an even higher standard. So we get it out of the POTW, we take it to an even higher standard, use it in cooling, and put it out into the bay even cleaner than it would have come from the POTW. Now there's an example where we had a choice, and had we not thought about the stewardship angle, we probably would have done the conventional thing that the engineers would have done. Now, this, is the, this is what you do, you just do the add-on. And there's an example, and this is the, the theme I want to keep accenting, is follow the money. When you're, when you're out in the community doing something else that needs to be done, tack on the stewardship piece because it tends to come in at pennies. You know, studies have shown that the amount of energy you consume in producing portable water depends on the quality of the incoming water. Um, studies done in Florida indicated that, you know, um, water that was extracted from the Floridian aquifer, which was relatively clean, uh, consumed less energy to, you know, to treat and distribute than water that was coming from, you know, desalination uh, plants, you know, um, in, in Tampa Bay. So, um, you know, municipalities and cities, as, as they, you know, need to give thought to uh, the sources of water that they are getting. You know, the, the cleaner the water, the less energy you use, the less energy you use, the more water you can produce and distribute. And I think that, you know, uh, the example that uh, the colleague was alluding to in Singapore, I th you know, where they collect all the rainwater. Rainwater after the first flush is relatively very clean water. And, you know, it seems rather strange that we allow all that water to 
flow into the, the, the water bodies, the surface water bodies. Then we go back and extract them and then, you know, treat them again using more energy and, 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 and chemicals and materials to do that. All dives have recognized that the... Uh that their islands are going to be non-existent in 10 years, and they've actually uh, negotiated uh, uh, new, new uh, living space. And they're moving, I think, in the next 10 years, their entire population of 300,000 uh, off. Now, unfortunately, uh, things, uh, uh, businesses like the Sands are building property right there on the, on, on the seashore. You know, so you, know, you might say set back, but... Uh, Businesses are going where the money is right now, and uh, they're, they're not, now I don't think that they're building for, they're only building for a 10-year lifespan. And um, recognizing also that, that uh, there is a high probability that uh, in 10 years there will be no more islands. They're just straightforward facts. Um, regardless of a human contribution, observed sea level rise is six-tenths of a centimeter a year, whether we're part of it or not. And we got a plan for that. Um, the projections of human contribution bring that to 1.2 centimeters a year. So over time, the rate will double. So it's just. You've got these dead zones. They're, they're related to a thermal and, and uh, salinity stratification in the wintertime. They stay dead. The lower water is heavier. It's down near the sediments, which elutriate nasty stuff, including a, a certain amount of oxygen demand. Uh, there are a lot of biology and chemistry going on there, but as, as, as consulting engineers, give me a tank of water and you want it aerated to a certain oxygen level or mixed to a certain degree or you want to turn it into wine or whatever you want to do, I can process engineer that. Why can't I do that out in the Baltimore Harbor? So, this, so when we look at that problem in a large way, We've got to think innovatively, how do we do that? The equipment doesn't necessarily exist. So we've teamed up with, with some of these guys here to, to try to evaluate what that. we're doing with Solar B is we're trying to circulate water just like the human body needs circulation. If you just sit on the couch all day and never move, you're, gonna, you're going to uh, uh, develop health problems. And if you look at a lake or any body of water, it's, it's a living organism in a sense. So uh, if you leave a, a bucket of water out overnight, of fresh water, it's going to turn into algae because it's not circulating. And that's going to be algae. And of course, algae's got a bad rap, I know. Algae's a good thing. Algae's just a simple organism, simple aquatic organism. Plankton is algae. Um, but if you move the water, more advantageous algae will start to grow. Chrysophytes, chlorophytes, organisms that are edible by zooplankton that are edible by fish. So. Part of what we're doing at Solar Bee is working on uh, a holistic approach to uh, circulating the world's water. Floating islands are uh, 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 real estate for microbes that are naturally occurring in the water, and those microbes are very efficient at uh, processing nutrients and balancing that water column. So what we've uh, been able to do is create a system that naturally balances uh, the water column and provides uh, amazing fish habitat uh, at the same time and provides aesthetic values as well. Uh, we've got a, a project that we've gone for permitting on uh, that hopefully uh, we'll be able to begin implementation at the end of this year uh, right here in the Inner Harbor uh, that is uh, two acres of floating islands as an infill to a floating dock uh, situation that uh, will be the first, as I know it, uh, the first floating park in the world. But with the technology now, with uh, geotubes and uh, other developments, there you can successfully take out material which, let's say, is contaminated material. But pumping it into a geotube and adding a flocculant, which will then have the, the solid settle out, and essentially clean water comes out of this tube and all the nasty stuff is contained within these tubes. We've seen projects like this where uh, in lake restoration where you can actually lay these, these uh, geotextile tubes along the water's edge. The big problem with a lot of these lakes is why are they silting up? Well, you have runoff, you have erosion. So how do you stop that? 
if you put a geotube down there and you pump the material in, and the material then is contained within this geotextile fabric, and clean water comes out, that's never going to erode again. And what you can do is plant native grasses on top of this, and within two months, you're going to have a nice little grassy berm that's not going to erode. And it looks good. It, it solves the problem. Baltimore City has come up, stepped to the, up to the plate with Back River uh, Wastewater Treatment Plant, and we're going to start a project there pretty soon um, using our closed bioreactors to clean the air, to clean the water. The more we do of this, if we could replicate you, well, we'd be better off. We'd be twice as good as we are today. But let's give Peter a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. And, and Tom is uh, one of the first, uh, besides Vance Hum and IMSG, is one of the first companies that kind of came to the table who's going to be joining us and going to Singapore. The Maryland Asia Environmental Partnership was pleased to host a meeting at the National Press Club to honor Kuteng Chai, the Chief Executive of the Singapore Public Utilities Board, with Maryland's top leaders from science, research, technology, and government in advance of our trade delegation to Singapore International Water Week. I think uh, the Maryland Asia Environmental Partnership has been a very strong uh, partner and supporting organization of uh, Singapore International Water Week right from the very start. And I can see that there's tremendous interest on the part of uh, Singapore companies and, and the 112 country you know, leaders of water that come, I think they are particularly interested in the kind of solutions that I think Maryland has to offer. Uh, I think Maryland really is, is, is the center of knowledge in the world in many, many areas. Uh, we have great universities and great companies. Uh, and I think many of these companies uh, uh, possess you know, the knowledge and the technology that I think will be tremendously of tremendous value, you know, to Singapore and to Peter will be leading a group and having a pavilion at this event. So hopefully we'll see some of you be interested to join in this delegation and visit Singapore. Have a talk with all the different attendees or have a discussion with the multiple attendees attending the Water Week and hopefully also with the Singapore based organization to explore opportunities for partnerships and collaborations. So hope to see you there.